uh, what I was showing here was from Techie. We went to uh, we went to this uh, and uh, which showed uh, the page speed differences uh, for an agency that fixed uh, that fixed um, uh, the the tracking. Uh, the CPCs you can see dropped by about thirty odd percent. Uh, this is the the thirty uh, uh, sorry the nine GTM containers and the scripts uh, that I that I showed, and then finally we are on to this page here. Thanks for thanks for that. Appreciate that. Uh, is where we've got a situation where now uh, we've got uh, the the very first uh, load of the page is giving uh, you know it's only six kilobytes, but it's uh, four point uh, five uh, three seconds, which is obviously horrendous, right? I mean this is. Uh, so what you're looking for there is, you know, is this less than 700 or 500 milliseconds? As long as it is, you just sort of move on, right? That's uh, that's the that's the kind of litmus test. And I did that view developer JavaScript console. I just loaded Amazon.com uh, in this case, or .au because yeah, I'm based in Australia. Uh, you can see that it's 700 uh, and uh, 784 milliseconds, uh, which and but obviously in the Amazon's case, that the brand is so big, it doesn't matter. Uh, in our case, uh, for most people who are running paid ads, especially for lead gen, uh, it is going to matter. So you just want to make sure that you have uh, something like this, or perhaps a bit better, and not nowhere uh, as bad as this, which is uh, four point five three seconds. All right. So moving on, uh, we uh, there was um, uh, someone that reached out to me. They're like, no, no, let's let's uh, fix it up. Um, or, or, or let's have a look at this. This is uh, free money, I'm calling it, uh, version one and version two. Uh, in a reasonably well-run uh, split test, uh, you know, obviously they, they did a few, the numbers went a bit greater than this, but the result didn't change too much. Uh, B uh, converted it uh, as in our leads of version two uh, converts, uh, you know, uh, by about 21% than version one. Um, and, uh, and so it ended up being a fairly, uh, you know, statistically significant result, uh, which, doesn't look like much, but it's uh, it's 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 twenty one percent. So at, at 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 scale, it actually makes a massive difference. So like I said, it does contribute uh, a lot. But if you've got a horrible offer, then probably not going to have the, matter much. If you even if the world's fastest page speed. All right. So the the other thing I want to share is uh, is uh, the AI part that's that's being used now uh, uh, quite a bit, and we've got a few users that are, that are moving. We've got a a chat version of this coming up very soon, so that way you'll be able to ask a couple of questions and then go into chat. But the but the principle is going to remain the same. So let me show you what I mean by that. Uh, oops. So what we do is um, we basically uh, ask a bunch of questions here. So um, in this uh, in this example, uh, I'll just do a quick uh, a quick demo here, where we're just asking a bunch of questions. So this could be you know wh whatever funnel you run could be weight loss, could be uh, you know solar, could be whatever it is. Uh, you essentially uh, would ask your various questions around you know why you're buying solar or why do you want to use weight loss or whatever. I, I did it more as as a fun thing for uh, where you know you're 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 suffering from vertigo, and so on and so forth. Uh, you know what's your blood pressure like, and then what happens is as you go through this, at the end what we're doing is we've got a prompt here, and I'll open this page up, where uh, we are sending uh, uh, this information to 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 ChatGPT, and it brings back, uh, and it brings back um, the result which we save into this custom field here. And then what we're doing is we are displaying that custom field directly on the last page here. So what happens is the, the entire page of results that is coming back actually is the thank you page. So you're gonna dynamically generate a thank you page now, which is coming from, from uh, OpenAI in this case, but you could use any other, uh, any other uh, you, know, uh, you know, LLM as well. So you can do, you know, for example, Anthropic or whatever the, the other ones that there are. If you host self-hosting, you can do that as well. All we're doing is we're just uh, saying, hey, act as a doctor, for this uh, thought experiment. The reason why I had to put that in is because if you just say, you know, act as a doctor, uh, it, it, it sometimes won't run. It's like, I'm not a doctor, I can't tell you that. So I said, as a, that's why I had to trick it, uh, or at least uh, uh, by saying it's a thought experiment. 
the patient's name is. And as you can see here, I've put the custom field of uh, first name. Uh, and then first name has the following symptoms, uh, ranked from zero to 10. Zero is the lowest, uh, 10 is max for suffering. Vertigo, we've got a score here. Heartburn, we've got a score here. Blood pressure score, diabetes, so on and so forth. Give a funny diagnosis. Uh, reply with HTML tags for styling like H1, H2. Sprinkle the content with emojis, but not too many. And this uh, returns does come up with uh, quite a few, uh, uh, almost like a, a three quarter page written amount of text. Obviously, you can mess around with it with the, the new models that are coming out. Uh, you know, you can start, you know, uh, which I haven't played with too much, uh, uh, at least not with the API. And you, you could perhaps get even much longer pages. If you're doing things like uh, if you're using uh, Claude, then you can really get pages and pages of content if you if you wanted to. And not that that's the purpose, but if you're if in if in a specific case that does uh, you know mean that they'll, you'll get better value uh, in terms of your conversions or at least run it as a, as a test if you want to. So what happens is when the when the response comes back in this case it's a, it's a page with uh, with copy with a little bit of uh, emoji and H1 styling so it it actually looks quite good. All we're doing is we're saving it into into a custom field, and then we just display the custom field here. Now there's a few ways of doing it. You can actually um, you can actually do it in the form as well, if you wanted to. So you make an API call, uh, you say, you know, analyzing your results, getting you the best offer, whatever, whatever, so on and so forth. And you can actually use that to do form copy as well. And that's the other place that you could put it. Um, and then obviously on the thank you page as well. Now, these are only the two of the use cases we've got here, uh, you know, and, uh, or you could even split test it if you want to have, uh, you know, certain type of answers, if you want to have a different prompt, um, so you, you're not limited by, uh, you know, just one prompt, obviously, you can actually use the decision node to split people off into different branches. And as a result, um, have, uh, have everyone, uh, you know, get a very specific response uh, that is uh, tied to them. So let's say if you are doing, let's say something like life insurance, you may, uh, you know, you may ask for things like, how many family members do you have, you may ask uh, things like, uh, uh, like, you know, do you smoke or not? And so on and so forth. And you can take all the data and uh, bring back uh, a fairly well-written piece of copy to present onto the form and or the thank you page. Uh, there's a new note that's coming up soon where you basically just take this same concept, but you can start chatting with it. So let's say for those of you who want to have a bit of a chat conversation to to direct them to a phone number or to agree to jump on a call or something, you can actually go ahead and transition yourself to, to that as, as well. Um, so yeah, we, we're, we're working on that at the moment, hopefully to release the fairly soon. Right, so that's the open AI part as far as a, a live uh, example is uh, is concerned and uh, and how you can actually end up end up using it. Uh, this is also really helpful for someone who's, whose copy is not a strong point. And the way you you account for that is by having a copy that's extremely personalized, because now the response will come back as you know, as a dad with four kids, you know, I'm sure it's difficult to uh, you know to to uh, to look after them. Let us take care of you know one thing off your hands and make sure that at least your family is going to be looked after should something happen, so on and so forth. And and so obviously that answer will change based on you know the number of family members you wanna you wanna uh, you want to. Uh, you know, ensure and so on and so forth. So, so that personalization does uh, help quite a bit. All right. The, so here you go. There's the uh, a personalized recommendation based on 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 prior input, which I just showed. Um, now comes the 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 other tracking part that uh, I put an, into Tacky, though it's really true tracking, which is uh, server side. So, uh, we've got certain Leadzook users. We've actually gone and uh, and taken it to the to the nth degree now, where what they've done is after every node, they've got uh, the Facebook server side API, and in most cases, it, because you, you once you do it, you can just you can just save it. So what I mean by that is, let me just uh, flick over here. So let's say I set up a webhook for let's uh, let's say for argument sake, uh, you know, Facebook in this case, I can just save it as a template right there. So you can right mouse click, uh, not just save it as a template. And what it does, it now it's available. Oops, for you to, uh, for you to add uh, from the side. Oops, uh, from the right here. There you go. It's uh, av it'll be available here. You can drag and drop that. So once you've built one, you don't have to redo the coding all that sort of stuff. You can just you know drag and drop that over and over again, and that should uh, that'll work. 
So that's what uh, this looks like. It's a it's a server side one where they're adding a server side after everything. So after that, you'll have a server side form, server side, so on and so forth. And you'll be passing uh, different uh, events. Uh, and as a result, you that you're not leaving anything to chance on what information to pass to to Facebook. So there was a question here. Let me see. Um, which DT is that? The uh, the uh, the um, uh, the one that I just showed with OpenAI. Yes, the one yeah. that had the the Doctor AI. Sure, no problem. Yeah, I I think I've already shared it. I'll just link you into the into the post that I did inside the Facebook group. Or if I can't find it, I'll just add it into a knowledge base article. Thank Perfect. you. No worries. All right. So that's the so and so this is uh, one of the setups. I'm not suggesting by any means that this is any 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 way uh, a better way of doing it. But people have taken it to the and said, well, listen, well, if if it helps for this, then why not just add it everywhere? So that's what they've uh, gone and done. Uh, feel free to uh, you know experiment with that uh, if you want to. Uh, the the point is that. It's it's not like ten times more work. So let's say you have ten nodes and you add this across all ten nodes. It's not ten times more work. It's literally you know another two minutes if that. We just drag and drop uh, you know your saved uh, your saved uh, web hooks and everything else pretty much remains remains the same. All right. So that's the uh, that's on the uh, on the on the Facebook side. All right now let's look at uh, uh, one more here. We had uh, uh, so this is someone who posted in the Facebook group, uh, which is you know best, what's the best way to combat uh, repeat users filling out your DT. Now, this is going to be pretty important for anyone selling leads where you have a problem with duplicates. So let's say if you generate a lead. So what happens here is you've, you've, you've got a very small universe uh, or you're targeting very tight and you keep showing ads to the same person uh, and uh, or not the same person, but a small group of people and they keep filling out the form over and over again. This could be malicious as well. So it could be a competitor or it could be, you know, bots, could be whatever. And so what ends up happening now is it's the same person uh, that you keep sending to the client. The client's going to get pissed off. Obviously, they're like, hey, man, you stop, you know, sending me duplicates. Um, and so they obviously they don't pay you. And usually, you're going to have uh, within your contract or whatever you do, if you are selling leads, is you know, there's going to be like a like a 30 day period or whatever X day period. Usually, it's like 30, where any any lead you send uh, within the 30 day period that's the same, then you don't pay for it because it's a, it's a duplicate lead. Right, so that's uh, essentially in in principle what what happens. So um, that was the problem. Uh, I went to I went to ChatGPT, uh, did the test, and it was live in another twenty minutes, and uh, and that's what it looks like. So I'm going to quickly cross over to to ChatGPT and show you the whole thing. Um, it's this one right here. So my prompt was, uh, let me see if I can zoom in. All right, let me just zoom in a bit more. Perfect. All right. Cool. Hopefully everyone can see that. If you can't, please uh, do let me know. All right. Um, so uh, you are a world class uh, JS in JavaScript developer and expert in Google Sheet scripting. I'm running a lead gen campaign, so give it my context. Here's what I, sheet I want. Um, so if you want to create a script that looks like the look up for columns, so and so forth, and you know, if you if you find a match, return back that it's a duplicate lead, so on and so forth. And basically, it gave me the whole script like so. Uh, there were a few issues with it, so I, I, I did some modifications, uh, as you can see right here. Uh, what I will do is uh, is uh, yep, update link uh, and uh, copy link, and I will add into the chat. So if you want to, you can go ahead and uh, follow along as to what I did. But the end result was it it, it gave me a script that looks uh, you know something like like that. And what I did then is I went into Google Sheets, uh, which is right here, and you go under uh, under App Scripts, and you just copy and paste it. So you just come here and you remove whatever's here. Usually, there's nothing here, and you just copy and paste. And and and, and what it does is when you go ahead and you you, you do a deployment, it'll give you a URL that uh, that actually looks like this. So this is an app, a free app called Insomnia. It's like Postman, but it's uh, but it's free. And what we've got here is we've got uh, uh, a get response that looks uh, like this. And what I'm doing is I'm I'm just I'm doing just doing a manual test to see if my Google sheet works. And when you have a successful uh, result, so what is what, so what this is doing is this is actually making an API call to this uh, Google sheet here. To see whether they can find a match. If it if it finds a match, 
it returns back saying uh, a fake lead equals is true. And it uh, comes back with the detail of what it matched. Um, so it matched uh, the first name, it matched the last name, it matched the email, phone, and IP address. Now, the reason why I did it this way is because, um, let's say, I just want to analyze my results for the next week or, or two and not just necessarily use that to, to, not, uh, to not send leads to, to the client or, or, or not send leads to my sales team or, or whatever the use case is. I just want to understand, like, what is it finding as a match? You know, is the, is the first name getting matched? Is the IP address getting matched? Is what getting matched? And so it starts giving you a, a, a detail on, on where the match is coming from, which is often missing whenever you design this thing. So as you can tell, you know, I've probably done it a few times now. So I'm looking for a specific detail about what where what what variables got matched. Let's say if only only first name got matched, like John or something, then that's probably not going to be a very good uh, a duplicate checking system because you know you know I don't know at least that you know seven or eight percent of of leads that come through depending on the market uh, is going to be called John or something. So it's, it's going to find, uh, you know, too many people that match and they're not technically, you know, the same person, obviously. So then you can set up. Um, so, yeah, no worries. Yeah, thanks, Andres. Um, so then what you can do is then you can say, like, uh, you know, I want to refine my script and make sure that if, if I am going to use a first name uh, or, or last name, then I must also match email or phone. And that's going to be considered my my criteria to identify if this lead is uh, is is if is fakely true or not, right? And that's when we're doing it. Now, now the point is usually you'd need a uh, the whole point of of the techie skills part is is that really you don't need that much techie skills anymore because I can come to something like a like like a chat GPT and produce this stuff as long as I can logically follow through what's actually going on and have a little bit of skills. Uh, once again, don't wanna, uh, you know trivialize the whole thing and say well you don't need any skills. You do need to be able to copy and paste. So all right, that is a requirement. But more so, just jokes aside, is knowing that that the way to do it is you would you would come under here and go to app scripts. But that's a literally, if you don't know this, then you know you can easily, you know, either ask Chat GPT for the answer, saying, hey, I'm trying to do this. How would I use Google Sheets for this? It'd probably give you something similar to what I've done. Uh, and or just you know, ask uh, you know uh, for on, on YouTube to watch a video or two. And very quickly you start understanding what this is. And since uh, Google Sheets are free. It scales reasonably well. It, it doesn't work too well beyond like you know you know hundreds of thousands of records. So 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 it's it's uh, at that point you're going to move into you know Airtable or or some other uh, you know database solution. But it does work uh, reasonably well uh, at least to 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 start out with. Right. So what's happening here is uh, we've got a situation where um, oops uh, where did it go right here. Uh, I've asked uh, I've asked uh, ChatGPT for the for the answer. And literally, uh, you know, tested it, uh, and we were live in uh, in twenty minutes. Now, what does that actually look like? Uh, rather than showing you this, because uh, this was a, um, at a at a um, at a live at a live uh, presentation at an event, so I couldn't uh, you know just flick back and forth. So, uh, but I will do it here. So there you go. That's that's what that. Uh, um, so you've got the form, or you've got the the early part of the decision tree. Uh, you would have a. Uh, uh, you would have, uh, you know, looking for a great deal for you, some sort of transition node. So what the transition node does, it just um, holds the person there while the API call is making a call. As you can see here from the testing that I was doing, that it took, uh, I believe it took, there you go, 2.35 seconds. It's right there. So because it took about, about two and a half seconds, um, you know, you do want to, you know, not have the person just waiting there going like, what the hell's going on? So you show them uh, the transition node. Uh, in this case, it shows them uh, what else going on here. Um, the transition node uh, does allow you to, um, oops, it looks like I, uh, nope. I think it was, there you go, it was on there. All right, so what it does, the transition node, it actually um, shows um, um, some sort of a, a spinning image, um, like so. So in this case, the spinner is, I'm just using this one. Uh, and use it for about two seconds. So what it's doing is gonna it's gonna keep uh, showing that until the API call comes back. And then when it comes back, it's gonna indicate whether it's fake or not. If it's uh, fake, you go take them down the left route, uh, this pathway. If it's uh, not fake, then you go down the the right one. But what you're doing is you do make a webhook back into Google Sheet. 
So what you're doing now is uh, is in is in this example is you're going to go into Google Sheet and add one more line, which is this new lead that came through. So then what's happening now is 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 your your database of leads is constantly getting built. And so if this person were to come back, let's say you know tomorrow, they'll get picked up as a duplicate lead, and then they'll go down this left path. So the first time they go on the right, if they ever come back, they go on the left. Right, and that is now obviously if you want to make sure that that you do have some sort of a, a script running. Uh, once again, I would use just not not that I did it in this case, but you just use ChatGPT to run a, a script of some sort, uh, or go every thirty days or whatever, and just remove uh, you know the last uh, all the other records, so you keep uh, your your um, your your due period to a specific uh, number of days if you want to, and so on and so forth. There's obviously a lot you can do here in terms of uh, in, in 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 customizing. The, the actual uh, and fine tuning it to what you actually need for your for your own business. Right, so I hope that sort of uh, goes through and shares with you, you know, the, the process of uh, of doing this. The example, the reason for showing the example is, is not because this is gonna be, a, you know, perhaps not even a use case that um, that that you need, but it's it's 20 minutes, it's zero cost and you'll no more duplicate leads. And the whole point was that that knowing that there are technical solutions out there and using things like uh, ChatGPT, you can really construct your own solution pretty quickly. So in Techie SOS, which is uh, something, uh, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a course uh, th that I've got inside the lead. So we, we did a, a server-side split tester using just ChatGPT. So you didn't even have to know anything and we created a, a server-side server split tester. I'm not suggesting by any means that you, you do that at scale. But the point was that, is it really that hard? And the answer was no. As long as you know a little bit about how to think through the problem and how to ask that off ChatGPT, you can get that. So what ends up happening now is, 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 is now you've got this massive capability in-house that should you run into situations where, I mean, I, I just wish we could, we had this technical thing, you, you're not stuck anymore. And it doesn't turn into like a five grand project for you know three months, talking to someone on Upwork and all this sort of stuff. You can fix perhaps a good number of these things just by having a slightly elevated understanding of the technical capabilities that's needed uh, in, in the business, all right, in, in, the, in the lead gen marketing side of things. Because a lot of things you can just hand it over to Google Sheet, a couple of API calls to either that or to some third party comes back, what do I do with the data? And, and having that knowledge and understanding can really, you know, allow you to, to, to move quite fast and once you've validated, once you've uh, you know you've, you've you've validated your solution and it works well for you, yeah, perhaps now it's worth your while to go and get someone to you know build something a bit more robust, perhaps you know hire a developer and maybe spend a grand or two or three or whatever it is that's required. But now they're they're working off something that's already working, and so it'll be easier for them to deploy as well because they have a working example. They know that 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 you know what the hell you're doing, so less likely to try and rip you off and so on and so forth. So there are some cost and time benefits, uh, e even if you are gonna get a, a third party expert to do this for you. All right, uh, we'll go to audiencing on the next uh, call uh, next week, uh, and I'll open it up to, to any questions. If you have any questions on, uh, on, uh, uh, on today's topic, uh, feel free to ask that. Otherwise, uh, yeah. there's no, we'll move it to, we'll move it to, uh, to um, opening it up. Hey Nick, Eric. this is Eric. Quick question for you regarding the uh, the duplicates, right? Because a lot of our buyers, I think we're doing some on a pre ping. Jonathan, correct uh, with with some of our verticals? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I I, I guess. Um, how does this work at scale? I guess Nick. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm not totally understanding uh, yeah. in the sense of. We're trying to, because we, we deal with this all day long, the duplicate yep. issue. Yep. You know what I mean? Especially in home services. Yep. Um, I, yeah. Hey, Jonathan do, Jonathan, do you see anything with what Nick just covered, like that would help us or is it, or is it not really, or not really? Um, I mean, we're using it, but... It's not a duplicate. We just like whatever is not selling. We had a post um, post response from Leadspedia saying that the lead was not sold, and it's up to us, Eric, to send the traffic to to uh, oh, a yeah. different. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I, so, I, so, I, so, so essentially, so, so I guess just to uh, kind of 
confirm that for for anybody else on the call uh, and all watching the recording. Essentially, um, that it's it's this pathway that that you guys are talking about, saying, hey, listen, you know, we made an uh, we we send a response to uh, Leadspedia or whatever lead distribution platform you're using. Response comes back saying, sorry, unsold. What what do you want to do with it? And that's when you would go down the alternate uh, pathway. So one of the things you can do is, especially if you've got a pink tree and, and, and the response comes back not sold, um, you could uh, redirect that specific lead to, to another offer as well. So that is something that you could do. Now, while that's not this setup, uh, it, it's something that you could um, look into. So what you would do is when the response comes back, you, you, would, you would drive it through something like this. Hang on, let me head over here. So in your case, it's, it's not it's going to be you know, is the lead sold or not? If it, if it's uh, sold, uh, then uh, great, you move ahead and uh, you know move on to the thank you page or whatever the heck it is. Uh, if it's not sold, then you 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 take them down the the alternate pathway, uh, which is uh, which is like well since I I already have him here, I've already paid for the traffic. Uh, you know they uh, they I could not liquidate that lead uh, here. Obviously, you don't have any more, more more buyers. Otherwise, they would already be in the pink tree. So what I do with them? Well. Hey, you know what? Do you also want discounts on I don't know car finance or some other generic offer? And you could try that. Now that one, they obviously you know they didn't come for that. So so theory would dictate there would be no interest. But uh, my experience and having worked on these things, uh, you know, across you know hundreds of funnels now, thousands of funnels, um, the you can actually transition to because people do have other problems. So so it's all about the positioning or framing of that next question. So are you are you interested in in other cost of living or cost of living pressure you know uh, pressure issues or benefits around cost of uh, living, and they say yes. All of a sudden, you just got yourself permission to introduce something else. So which of the other following things that you may be uh, you know struggling with? You know, do you have a and you can present just one checkbox question. You know, I have a home loan, I have car loans, I have blah 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 whatever, and then you can uh, then and then you can uh, you know. And then you can int uh, pick the one, uh, the AP, uh, the CPA offer uh, that is giving the best, uh, you know, conversion. And you can try them on some other offers that you guys are running, and or perhaps just pick one from from you know some other CPA network that has offers around other things that you guys don't. And you try and liquidate some of that some of that traffic, um, and that would be one way. While you go and find another buyer, obviously, if you are getting stuff that's coming back and saying, hey, listen, there's no buyers for this stuff, you know, one solution would be to, to go and get more buyers. But if it's being rejected by everybody because of low quality, then you're unlikely to find another buyer who's going to buy, you know, you know, a, a crappy lead uh, unless they in their in, they are in they are in that business. But but now, but now, you know, they're not going to pay you much for it. So so uh, then what you can do is is to deploy the strategy I've just shared. Is saying like, well, is there anything else that I can I can liquidate this person against, to for him or her or those those rejected leads or the the the, the alternate pathway, that the amount of revenue you get from that starts subsidizing at least some of your ad cost. Uh, in some uh, there were there, there there've been cases where we we've, we've built it out where we ask multiple offers like and you daisy chain them. I saw one the other day because I shared that idea in, on a call, and they're doing a couple of thousand leads a day now. And I could see that they have an alternate pathway. They, when they don't qualify for for their their primary offer, they're actually saying, "Oh, so are you interested in car loans? No. Are you interested in this?" And they just have got like question after question after question. And they go, "Yes." They just redirect them to that, and we and all they're doing is just picking that offer up from a from a CPA uh, network uh, to do it. Uh, in fact, they're using something very similar as what I shared um, what I shared uh, in this example. Uh, yeah, in, in this one right here, what they do is they make an API call to Google Sheet, and the Google Sheet has got the current offer. It's just a URL. It brings back the URL and it redirects them to that URL, and that's it. So, so they've got a, a VA or someone uh, on their team who manages just a Google Sheet, and their job is to just go in there and make sure. Um, so they would do something similar to, so let's say if this was, uh, you know, let's say this was debt. The current debt offer, then they'd go and have a URL here for the, the, the current debt offer that's paying the best. And then this one here is going to be, I don't know, let's say solar or, you know, this is going to be medical or whatever, whatever, whatever. They would add all of the URLs here. And their job is to just manage the URL, make sure that the, the most current one is available. And, 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 and so what the Google, uh, the API call to the Google Sheet does, uh, it, 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 um, it brings back uh, the most current URL to redirect the person to. 
And so it's a it's a super slick way of ensuring that the offers never expire, or at least the offers never expire at the at, at the client or the or the whatever network you're using. Just replace it with something else. Uh, since you guys are already in the CPA network game, uh, you know that's that's not a difficult task at all. It's interesting you bring that up because I'll, I'll use debt as an example, right? So we have debt that we're testing, very very limited limited. Yeah. Uh, but still, we are seeing a lot of unsold leads yeah. that are coming. Let's uh, you know, we're, it's come from a traffic channel that we're trying to buy media on. Yeah. Or affiliate is sending traffic to our page. And it's like, wow, you know, if we could figure out how to monetize that better, it would it dramatically change the way, you know, an affiliate can run and we can run internally. Yeah. But okay, now, so, so this is one solution to it. Now, here's the other benefit of doing it. Like this, you know, like, listen, I, if, I, if I can just back, you know, you know, you know, get back 30 cents on the dollar on those leads, I'll, I'll be happy. And, and, and that's great. You know, and sometimes, you know, you get a, over a, over a dollar, actually. Now, that's that's one way of looking at it. But the other one is that it actually ends up becoming market research. Let's say you're not in the debt space right now. You're on something else. You're like, holy shit. I didn't realize that the debt converts like this. Oh, cool. Let me go get my own debt off now. And so all of a sudden, your, 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 your funnel that's just supposed to be helping you liquidate your, your unqualified uh, leads or the leads that you couldn't sell or whatever it is, all of a sudden starts giving you uh, insights on, on the other stuff that could be working. And all of a sudden, now you've got a, a tested uh, way of, of, of bringing new offers into, into, into your, your network uh, and or for anybody else who doesn't have a, a network or, or to run any other vertical they want to get into. It's, it's a really nice way of validating, uh, you know, other verticals because now you've got some understanding of the conversion rates, you've got some understanding of the types of pages you have to run, and all so on and so forth, all, all the nuances of it, and you and, and you bloody got the you, you got it to convert using using unqualified traffic. So it actually starts validating what perhaps what you should do next, if that if that yeah. makes sense. Nick, I mean, here's the thing: I think that we kind of maybe struggle with to be totally transparent with you, right? Yeah. We're we're, we're we really like what lead so capabilities have. I love your insights into these things, but it's, it's more of like implementing like the strategies and, or the, the, you know, the, the, these funnels. It, and it's like, if you're off by, a, you know, a little here or there, it can, you know, make or break. So it's like, how do, how do we, you know, in, is there, I, I know you have your services, I believe, yeah, yeah, no, no. So we we don't do much of it unless it's, there's a very hairy problem, like something that you've tried to work with somebody else and they've just bossed okay. it up for you. That's we we kind of like act, act more as that. And 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 I'm not doing that more as a, as a, to provide a service per se uh, as a revenue generator, but more just to understand. Well, hang on a second. Like this stuff is not supposed to be that hard. So where did you get stuck, and how can I help you, uh, or how can we help the product? So that these technical problems are either resolved by us at scale, so 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 either you and or the person who's trying to help you can 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 do this better, and that's and and so I, I suppose you know I, what you're saying here just basically you know proves my point that uh, that uh, uh, that techie skills is one of the things that's needed to to execute these things, and then and that, that that's that's the very point of this of this whole, uh, you know, of, of this week's uh, session. So yeah, yeah, you're right. Now, if, if there's anything specific you're struggling with, right, just, 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 just send me an email and just sort of like, you know, where, where, where are you guys getting stuck? Uh, and, and, and that way I, I get some additional feedback uh, as to you know, perhaps improve the product, uh, you know, and, and I get it because, um, you know, to be able to do this at scale, you know, you, you do, need you know someone who who can you know, who can you know who who can think a little bit outside the box you know that's totally. that's the whole like 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 just just to you know nothing against the against against whoever posted uh, you know this question they're reasonably technical but uh, as you can see the, the the solution was was all right hang on a second what are you actually trying to do here let's let's piece it out okay cool so one way to solve this would be a google sheet okay well let me try the google sheet approach first it worked really well well let's deploy that in three weeks now from now, we'll see if there's something a bit more scalable that we need to devise. So it's oftentimes um, reading the problem or understanding the problem and then breaking it down to a potential solution. And then how do you technically implement that 
quickly so that you're not spending, you know, five grand or some stupidly number of amount of time to be able to get it done. So I suppose that's what you're referring to here. Big time. Greatly appreciate it. You know, we'll, we'll do that after this call. And then yeah. another question I had, does anybody else have any questions? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, that's all right. Hey, Paul, any questions or any comments? I, I, I do, but like carry on, Eric, honestly, I can wait. No worries. Okay, cool. There you go. Over yeah, to you. The, the last thing for me is it comes down to, let's say, a funnel, right? And the questions. I almost feel like sometimes we're just like, oh, you know what? We don't want to ask too many questions. And I'll, I'll just use let's say debt as an example, it could be any vertical, but let's yep. just say debt, right? Where some of the buyers that we're talking to say, hey, we want you to add, are you employed? If so, you know, how much do you make uh, per month and drop down? And I feel like, you know, we're kind of like, wow, you know what, let's just make a, a super short form. And then, you know, it converts well, but maybe the quality is not that great. But it's just kind of our mindset. We're like, okay, let's just see if we get the quickest conversion possible without kind of looking at, okay, does it really affect it if we right. add two more additional questions? Yeah, okay. Know? So 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 truth be told, it doesn't actually. It's all about the framing of the question. That's that's yeah. So if someone tells me my questions are converting. I'll be like, all right, let's look at the wording of it. Is there some other way in which we can we can we can frame this question here? Or can we change the order around? Or there's some other way of doing it so that you can end up getting so and just to sort of uh put uh, give you give you an example, um they were there is a um uh, a funnel inside leads. In fact, I've seen it a few times now, but that's one sits uh, top sits top of my mind because I actually built the damn thing. Uh, it's got about 35 questions and it, and, it, and it's got a 50% completion rate. So people who start here it will go right at the bottom and it's a 50% completion rate and it's got all about, I don't know, 30 or so questions sitting inside it. Now, why wh uh, why was that, did that happen and why didn't we see any drop-offs? It's because we, we, we were quite careful in how we, um, how we, we, we structured the questions firstly, the order in which we added them and along the way we gave them some encouragement. If you, now, when you have questions like, uh, you know, sites like, uh, uh, like, is it is it Noom? I think it's Noom. Let me see. Uh, yeah, this one here, All right? Right. So this, yeah, there you go. That's, uh, you know, when you click the landing page, it goes. Through. Now, this thing goes has about, I think, I believe about thirty or forty questions, and and they're able to to back it out. Now, what they do, and and I I would definitely try and rephrase some of these questions. They probably do a lot of testing here, so maybe this is the best version. I don't know. But along the way, uh, what it does, like, so it, it does this, it does uh, living on the fanciness aside, um, you know, let's say, I don't, know if, I don't know if that's a good number or not. Uh, okay, let's make this person obese. Um, all right. Uh, you know, checkbox. And uh, next, uh, oh, sorry, that, that, that previous question here, there you go. So, so what they're doing here is halfway through, they're just uh, reframing it. Oh, uh, you know, you know, we're really glad you shared, right? They're encouraging you to to continue sharing just by adding that little one little line there. That's right, and it's not it's not difficult. It's just it's just saying like, well, what what sort of personal psychology can we add to this funnel here? <clears throat> now, the the other way to do it is is um, you know, people who've shared their um their their income levels uh are generally we're able to give them a much better you know offer, much better response, or much better consultant or much better whatever. So now you're in, and now you're showing them a reason why copy. Why am I asking you about income? Because it's not for just because I want to find out the income. It's because I need the income to make sure that I have the best financial planner who's going to help you or oh, whatever the scenario is. Right? So 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 I I think it's a it's a it's it's uh, uh it's something that you you should not uh, needlessly not do. Just because you're worried about conversions, um, you can always split the funnel up. So what I mean by that is you can send fifty percent down one route. So you can you can just start your decision uh, your, your decision tree, I should say, with uh, a, a split test uh, right at the top, where we do fifty percent go down this way, fifty percent go down the, that way. The, the 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 pathway that goes to the left is your normal one, which is quite short, and the pathway to the right is the one that has got the two or three extra questions. And uh, or, or maybe you want to send ninety percent down the uh, down the your your normal route because you're happy with the results, and now you just want to see whether whether adding an extra two or three four questions 
only to 10% of the traffic, whether that makes any difference or not. And if it does make a difference, well, can we make some changes later on and so on and so forth? So you don't go and destroy your funnel just, uh, just for the sake of testing whether, whether a slightly longer funnel is gonna, is gonna drop uh, you know, conversions materially. And that would be one way uh, around it from a practical standpoint, rather than just uh, taking my word for it and saying, oh, well, Nick said it, it, it doesn't matter. So let me just go, you know, you know, blow up my whole, whole uh, decision tree and then add the three more questions. Don't do that. I, I would not recommend that. Um, I, I, I definitely suggest that, uh, you know, divert a small amount of traffic to, uh, to, the, to the hypothesis that you want to test and then work on that. So that way, it's a very safe way to validate your question uh, or to get the answer to your question. Does adding three or four extra questions around, you know, the other bits and pieces, then it gives the quality and, and, and how much of the, how much uh, conversion am I going to sacrifice? And sometimes by adjusting it, yeah, perhaps the first time you do it, you know, your questions are badly worded. You're like, oh, listen, you know, why? by adding a three more questions, we, we lost, you know, 10% of our leads. Good. Well, let's go have a look at the questions. Is there another way of wording it? Can we change the order around a little bit? Okay, cool. We brought it down to 5%. And now, now you can go back to the, the client saying, hey, listen, with these extra data points, you know, you know, are, are you going to pay us more? And, and perhaps you can get a higher payday. And so now it doesn't matter the fact that you've got a slightly lower conversion because you are getting, it's being offset by a higher payout. And, and oftentimes it, it, it makes no difference actually. So in which case it's just, uh, you can still use that reason, obviously, if you want to. Um, so you just get a higher pay uh, with, with no loss in conversions. So that would be a more practical, pragmatic way of going about it rather than just, uh, you know, just adding in into a working funnel. Does that make sense? Great. Really appreciate it. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know that, that's the whole point. You, you've got you've got a tool that allows you to to experiment with. So that's use it for that. Yeah. So and 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 that would be the right way of doing it actually, because you've got a version that's working, and now you're saying, well, do these new ideas or will these changes, uh, you know, make any 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 uh, any material change here? And and you're like, oh, you know, it might drop my conversions. Well, you don't have to do it to the whole funnel. Just send the send the traffic to five percent or ten percent, two percent, or whatever your, your numbers are uh, and divert it that way. And, uh, and, and then you, in, in a week or two or 10 days, you'll, you'll find out whether it made any difference at all. But, the, but here's the thing, there's no need to panic just because it had a worse result. What we do now is we, we go back and analyze saying, well, how else could we have done it? Is there a better way of rewording it? Can we add a bit more persuasion in here? Can we add a bit more pre-framing in here? And so on and so forth. And it's the, that, that's the more the persuasion part of the funnel that comes in and where you're working at how to reword things around. Thank you. No problem. Paul, over to you. Okay, all right. So this it's one of those questions about a use case. Now, I know Leads Hook will be able to do it. It's just how easy it will be to do it. Um, so let's use the option as a, a biz op offer. Yep. And you're answering questions. So obviously Leads Hook can do reports and they tally up usually up to 100 and then obviously it gives you a score on 100 and that's the, the usual use case now what if we were to ask questions on a biz off offer and and do a calculation within the within lead talk is in like you want to earn this and this is your expected you could earn could could we change the value of just 100 to a monetary figure first of all say on a bar chart and then the calculations to give the results for those bars in turn, in inside leads talk how easy would that be to do or how difficult would that be to do so can you repeat the question again so you uh, you you're trying to change um have the monetary value for the uh, instead of a score or yeah. or, the, or the or the or the or the score converts into a monetary value okay so say say just on a normal lead talk report and you've got a bar chart of three bars and yep. your total with your questions 175 125 135 yep. could we convert that 75 into seven thousand five hundred dollars like and then the th so yes. we could change it change the scale first of all of what what it would be Yep. And then what I did measure and then to actually instead of just putting points and assigning points of each answer, if it's a calculation like they in one question, they said, all right, I want to earn. I want to make $10,000 and I've got three days a week that would give one of the bar charts 
answers as opposed to just assigning a point i know it's a little bit i'm not sure if i've explained it properly yeah, okay all right, okay so let me let me uh work on what i've understood and then let's take yeah. it from there all right so let's say uh if you do have a question so i'm gonna come here and um and ask a question uh so what, what is the question again uh do you have three days or whatever was it you oh yeah so so, so say say um i want to um ten thousand dollars in a year right yep right. and right. they only they only have three days available to to earn a week right yep. and they can earn fifty dollars a day so ten thousand is not really relevant it's like getting a calculation of three times 50 and then yep. the bar chart would give that answer or one of the bars would give that answer okay so this the first way the simplest way to do it is let's say for example if i have this question which is i want to you know give my family you know you know uh, another let's say i don't know 10k you no know, i don't know worth of uh 10k income so they, I don't know, can be happy or whatever, right? So don't worry the question. It's, it's just been uh, worded just for the purposes of, of getting uh, some answers going here. Right, mm -hmm. so let's say um, if I um, say um, say yes and no, so I'm going to go uh, yes here and I'm going to go no here. Um, you can actually go ahead and pick a custom field that's uh, text and you can go ahead and pick up a custom field that's uh, numerical. I'm just going to pick these two for a quick example. So this is where you would go, perhaps pick the answers up. This is where you could have a score. Um, probably should have selected uh, uh, two number fields. And let's go ahead and pick uh, one more. I'm going to go ahead and pick that, the Agora investment score. So what could happen here is this could be the points. So let's say they say yes, then they get 10 points. If they say no, they get zero points. But this could also be monetary value. So this is uh, 5,000 and mm -hmm. that's 1,000. So you don't have to necessarily uh, do any complex calculations. And at the end, the aggregate of the of the, uh, of the the scores could also be used in, in that way. So that way you don't, you avoid yourself needlessly having complex uh, calculated fields to do a calculation of the sort of or what you or what you're talking about. So in, in so in this, so you 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 directly have got dollar values attributed to the questions. Now you can put negative as well. So if they have a bad answer, you can actually remove uh the um the the, the dollar value. Now I don't know if this works well with the scenario you're explaining, but if, if if that does, then that's one very simple way of executing this. Because now you're avoiding all the formulas and all that other nonsense, and at the end you just go ahead and just graph whatever the values that remain. Does that does that make sense? As, as a concept? It does. It, 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 it the concept does, but I think for the for the use case I'm thinking, it is like it depends on the calculation that they give. On some of the answers they give, it would be a custom field which would be the answer, and that's what I want to put onto okay. the bar chart. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, actually, you know, do you mind just you know sending to me, uh, you know, on Metamos or something, so I can get a better understanding of yeah. what exactly yeah. you're trying to execute? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I don't think yeah. I'm understanding this. No, specific. yeah. My, <laughs> apologies. Yeah, got, yeah, no, no, no. All good. All good. All good. All good. Part of the video, Nick. Don't worry. All that good. was just fluffy. Yeah, yeah. No, all good. Cool. <laughs> no worries, man. All right, Jonathan. Any questions? Um, not sure. I mean, I, I yeah, a question. Last week we went over like you know the webhook for to fire events. You show it like in a, a server side webhook. Yes, which is this thing here. Yeah. So I talked to we have someone that's doing like media buy for us on Tabula. I talked to him about it. Yep. He didn't know what he was talking about, so he had no idea. So I'm not sure. Like you know, like you said, we could use the same one for Tabula. The only thing we need to change will be the post back URL, right? Correct. And that will make the lead conversion much better and all this stuff. Correct. Okay. Correct. Uh, yeah. So here you go. Um, you said tabula, right? Let's uh, let's do a quick uh, Google search.
go. <clears throat> Um, I've done it. Uh, so there you go. Um, I believe it's. Uh, that's it right there. Um, so I'll put the link uh, for you uh, in the chat here. So what you're doing is you're you're gonna you're gonna grab you're gonna grab. Uh, I'm gonna copy this copy link. You would uh, go into uh, into lead soup. Let's just use this one uh, webhook, <clears throat> like so. And there you go. Obviously, you do need to grab the the click ID uh, and obviously the name of the event that you've set up inside the platform. So that's it. And that's that would be is what the uh, the server side. Um, and you would obviously add this. So let's say this was a lead conversion. <clears throat> It's, I mean, that's, that's, it's not a lead conversion. It's the one that you fire between each node every time you pass through the Okay, okay. Then, then if, if it's view content, then you can actually go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, and the, your, your name would be, your, your your name would be view content or whatever the heck it is. And, okay. uh, and then, and that way, so like so, and that would sit, you know, either here or if it's a lead one, then obviously you would have it down here. Um, so, and that's it. So, so as I, as I said, it, it's no different to, uh, to to this one here. Once once you once you have the Facebook one working, uh, you uh, obviously not all the all the parameters are required for for most other platforms. Um, but it's, that's that's all you're doing. You're just adjusting the the payload or the information that these guys require. In this case, they don't even require that. They just they just require. It's basically this is is what they what they need. It's a posting of uh, of of that. And that's it. So that that in a nutshell is is all that's uh, all that's needed. These would be in your case would be custom fields because they would be sitting inside uh, custom fields that you would have grabbed beforehand as variables, and the event name would be a variable and or hard coded um, e either way. If if you want to make it a variable, great. Then in this case you just you just need one and you replace the event name dynamically as well if you wanted to. But if you don't want to go all the way that far, then that could be you know lead. Or that could be, you know, view or whatever the the event name is, uh, and then uh, the click ID to to send them for that particular uh, event, and that's it. In, in fact, uh, from 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 my uh, from my testing and uh, that I did uh, in in the past, including the Techie SOS course where we covered this, um, this was probably one of the easiest one to work with. Uh, the the Facebook's the the hardest one, and this is probably the one of the easiest ones to work with. And that and this is literally the setup is this. Got it. And just to send this like webhook view content will make the conversion better. Yeah. So obviously the leads would be would be would be perfect on 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 that case. Uh, I'm not sure about Tabula's match rates and all that sort of stuff. Unlike Facebook, which which does have that. So in your case, here's what I would start. Right, day zero or day one today. Go ahead and take care of the of of whatever your main conversion. So let's say for argument's sake, if it's a lead conversion, go ahead and do that. And get this thing put into here right away. So, so let's say uh, that's my final uh, results page or my final thank you page or whatever it is. I'm gonna do something like this. Obviously, do mark that as as a, as a, with with a tabula. Uh, so, like so, right? That's it. All right, tabula. Now, in your case, if you are gonna use the same funnel for two things, <clears throat> then you want to use a decision node to identify where the traffic's coming from. So, if it's tabula, you you send them here. And if it's uh, if it's Facebook, you want to send them to another pathway, right? So that way you don't you're not sending tabula leads conversions data to Facebook if you don't want to, all right? So that 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 is a choice for you to make, and so that's the only limitation here. But having said that, your tabula funnel almost always looks a little bit different to the Facebook one, and I would rather you just set them up separately rather than mix them up all both into one. So in this case, what you do is you, you you get your Facebook one or your Google one, make the adjustments because sometimes the the questions can get worded a little bit differently, perhaps a little bit longer. Um, you know, obviously you need an advertorial or or something on those lines. And uh, and the reason for separating out on on day zero is that whenever you need to make any edits, you're not you're not you're not you're not going to break Facebook just because you want to fix Tabula. So for that reason, keep it separate. Also, it's it's while we do have some users who combine everything into one and then they use these yellow nodes to split people off into different directions, uh, you know, it, it does require you to occupy quite a lot of brain space to do it. And, and I'd rather, uh, and perhaps you can, 
but maybe tomorrow you're going to hire someone and they can't. They're not quite, you know, uh, maybe they're not, uh, you know, quite so an analytical like you to be able to process so much complexity in the one place. So for that reason, I would often suggest that whenever you're building funnels, don't don't build just for yourself. Build it so that the lowest common denominator in your in your on your team can also run with it without necessarily you know going I don't know what the hell all this stuff is. So that way, if you are gonna, I'm a big fan of just creating uh, uh, you know decision tree specific to uh, a a traffic uh, source. That way, you can just clone it uh, and build another one if you want to. Uh, and you can make changes without affecting the other stuff that may be working already. Got it. So you will have like one decision tree for each traffic source. Is that what you say? Yeah, yeah. So so one for Google search, uh, one for you know uh, YouTube, one for Facebook, and one for uh, you know native like Taboola or something. And and the reason for that is because because, because you may want to make adjustments to each one differently. So let's say if your if your Google conversions or YouTube conversions go to crap and you're like, oh man, my, my data is showing me something's going on here. If it's if it's one decision tree, so now, now, you, now you're gonna have to go like, I, I don't wanna destroy my, my Facebook, it's working. Like, I don't wanna touch that. So 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 what ends up happening is, is it's easy, to, it's much easier to make a mistake now. And so much more complex to manage. Doable, but yeah, it's it's easy to make mistakes with. But the the other thing is that well, at some point, I'm sure you know, six months from now, or whatever, someone else on your team will 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 may may take over the task of what you're doing. Now you've got one funnel, and maybe you don't want to give him access to the whole funnel. Maybe maybe you only want him want him him or her to just work on Taboola or something because uh, that's the one way you need help with. Well, if everything's sitting in one place, then firstly they have visibility of the whole thing, and perhaps that's uh, there's some IP issues that you want to protect. Or perhaps some other things that you don't want to give access to, or don't want him to uh, mess around and make some edits for your tabula traffic, not realizing that making changes in a live funnel uh, might drop the conversion for Facebook, and so it needlessly, you know, you know, puts you in a riskier position than if it was already separate. And if tabula is not working, you know, you can make your, you know, he or she or whoever it is can make lots of edits to that funnel. It won't affect anything else. So for that reason, I would suggest splitting it up. Um, but it's more of a personal preference thing, not not uh, not uh, you know, uh, and, and nothing to do with whether whether it works better or not. That that that's, it's not for that. It's just a, it's easier to mentally process, right? All right, I'm looking at just Taboola right now. Let me think through Taboola. Uh, but if you have Facebook and Taboola and all, all everything mixed in one, it, it 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 can get a little bit you know complicated to think things through. Um, and uh, yeah, so I hope, hope that sort of answers the question. Got it. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys, if there's uh, no more questions, if there's anything to help you, please post in the Facebook group and or send me a message. Otherwise, same time, same place next week. Chat soon, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.